In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install PHP MyAdmin. Let's look first at where I'm going to install it. I'm using Desktop Server to run a local development environment, so I have pma.dev here. This is a fairly vanilla install of WordPress. I haven't really done anything to it besides put my own title on it. If you're going to put it on a server, you can just put it in your web space, usually in public underscore HTML, or maybe your folder is called your domain name or something like that. Basically, as long as it's accessible on the web, you can install PHP My Admin there. So I'm going to click Download. And Chrome is downloading it here for me. And I'm going to choose Show in Finder. And here you can see it. Now I'll double click it and it will extract it. So now I'm going to copy this folder and I'm going to go to my sites folder. And here's that WordPress install I showed you a moment ago. And I'll paste it right in here. Actually, it's next to pma.dev, and I want it inside there. And I'm going to rename it because that's a really long name. I will just call it PMA. And there is PHP My Admin. But now we need to configure it. If you were installing this on a remote site, then you would FTP this folder up. The first thing we want to do is find the config file, which is right here. And it comes with a sample file, but you can turn it into a real file simply by removing the dot sample. And now we have a real config file. Now we want to edit this file and make just a few changes, but not very many. This isn't very scary, even if you don't know PHP. I'm using an editor here called Sublime. You can download it from the internet, but you can use any text editor. I don't recommend Notepad for Windows. It's not really a text editor. But just about anything made for editing websites will work just fine. The first thing you want to change is right here at the top called the Blowfish Secret. And you can put any text in there you like. All it does is use it to help randomize your connection. There. Truly, any text will work, and it doesn't have to be any longer than what I just put in. It just needs to be some random string that this can use. And now, for most configurations, we're done. I will save this, and we'll go back to our website. Now, for some servers, you need to do more work, and we'll take a look at that later. But the vast majority of servers, that's really all you need to do. So now I will go to slash PMA. And there we are. It tried to log in automatically, but it couldn't. So now it's asking for a username and password. But where can we find our username and password? There are a variety of places. One, you can look in the documentation for your host and find out what your username and password might be. Second, you could simply ask your host. The easiest, if it's available to you, is to look inside the database configuration of any app you might already have installed. For example, WordPress or Joomla or Drupal. They each have a configuration file which will have this information in it. So let's look at that again. This is that WordPress install I was telling you about. And there's my WP config file. And right here, I have my database name, user, password, host, everything. So I'm going to copy my user and copy my password. And hit go. And now I am into PHP my admin on my local server. And that's all there is for install, really. The kind of authentication we used is called cookie, 
and the way you can tell is that we were offered a web form. Another type is called HTTP authentication, and that would pop up a window asking for a username and password. Now, I mentioned that some installs can be a little more complicated, and I'd like to explain how that works. I'm going to go back to the config file for phpMyAdmin. Now, right here is host on line 31, and we've chosen localhost. That means that the database is on the same server as the website. Not all hosts do this. Something else to really note, though, is that often hosts will provide phpMyAdmin for you. For example, and they use HTTP authentication, which is why I get this pop-up. Now, one downside is, this is a very old version of phpMyAdmin. You can tell the difference just looking at it. The downside is, it's old. And there's a lot of new functionality in the newer versions of phpMyAdmin. So even if your host provides you with a copy of phpMyAdmin like this, it may be worth installing your own copy. You can always find your database connection information inside your CMS config file. Barring that, my recommendation is to look inside your hosting documentation or ask your host. Other than that, we're finished. It didn't take very long at all to install phpMyAdmin. If you're installing on a host where the host is localhost, all you have to do is put in the Blowfish secret and load it up.